I'm just going to quickly give you a little story because I think one of the most powerful things that we could do in this season of time is find somebody from another generation to connect to. We're comfortable with our friends, we're comfortable with our age group, but there's power in connecting. So find people that are not of your demographic to connect with. Find people that don't look like you. Find people that dress like Bishop. Find people that barely have enough fabric in their jeans to hold them on, the, on their bodies. Find people that don't look like you. They don't act like you. And can we find the power of generational connection? There's power in it. Let me read you a quick story. Exodus chapter 17. I'm not going to keep you but for the next few minutes. Exodus chapter 17. This is the story when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt. We're crossing into the land of the Amalekites. Amalekite means to plunder. These were, these were the robbers. These were the thieves. These were the spirit of robbery. So look what happens. Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men to go out and fight. Fight with Amalek. This is the first time that Israel had gathered together as an army. Tomorrow I'll stand at the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him. And fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. So you see what happened is that as long as Moses' hands were being held up with the rod in his hands, Joshua could take his sword and fight in the valley and prevail. But the second Moses' hands started, drop, started to drop and that rod started to drop, Joshua lost his edge. And the enemy started pushing back against him. There was an undeniable connection in the spirit between the generations. Moses was old, but he was not irrelevant. Bishop is old. Sorry, Bishop. But he's got more energy than most of the people in this room. And some of his greatest days of relevance are still ahead. Moses held up that rod, and as long as he held up his rod of authority, Joshua prevailed. Do you see the synergistic effect? Joshua needed Moses' rod, but Moses needed Joshua's sword. Do you understand that God never designed it, that one generation would do it all? Come on. Thank God. Thank God. Because for years, man, I could dance four hours just like these kids did. And they're talking about how bad their feet hurt. I remember that. I remember that in these days. It's just that now it takes 15 minutes instead of four hours. But how many know we need the fiery ones? We need the sword of the Lord in the hands of the generation that can take the battle to the enemy. But that doesn't mean we say, go fight the enemy, and we send them out there. No, we, we are the ones that stay connected to them. We're connected to them in the spirit. We're connected when they go to school. We're connected when they go to college. Let me tell you what previous generations have done. We raise our children, and then we send them to college, and we think we've taught them well. They'll do just fine. No, let me tell you, when you send your kids to college, they need intercession. They need intercession. They need heaven being pulled down for them because they are going to face some of the greatest forces in the earth when they go. Generational connectedness does not end when our children hit 18. Being
being there for our children does not end when they become adults. When we're facing situations, let me tell you, we go to Bishop. He's our natural father. He's our spiritual father. What a blessing. Because we were never made to do life alone. Yes, we have to be responsible. But it's like people have this picture of parents giving their children a map and saying, this is how you live life. Go do it. No, no, no. It's a matter of us getting down in the jungle with them. Come on, swinging that machete with them to clear the pathway with them. Their battles become our battles. Our battles become their battles. The power that comes when we're connected. Here's a few things that I just threw out there. Courage. Bishop gives us courage. When we get called to go minister to a, a leader in a nation, you know what courage does? Courage says, you know what? My previous generation did it. I can do it. The word encourage means to put courage into somebody. And that's what parents do. We give our kids courage. Wisdom. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. I've got a lot of great things that I could say, but I'm, I'm not going to keep you. Parents give their children wisdom. They give their children identity. Do you know when you name a child, you're, you're speaking identity over that child? You're calling that child by that identity. But beyond that, are you speaking impossibilities over your children? Or are you speaking possibilities? Are you speaking limitation? Or are you speaking miracles? over your kids. Come on, we need to really watch what we're speaking over our kids. And we've got to be very intentional about this. Very intentional about understanding that every single one of us are a, a Moses to be a leader. And you're going to have people holding up your hands. Who is your Moses? Whose hands are you holding up? Or her, who is your her? And, huh? Aaron and her. Who is your Aaron? Who is your her? Who is holding up your hands? 